very much. Thank you. Hello, I'm Ron Reagan. Are we alone? And before you say, isn't everyone, I'll explain. I'm talking about UFOs. So are a whole lot of other people these days. Interstellar travel may be lurking around the corner, and sooner or later, we'll have to decide, is something out there? The search for intelligent life beyond Earth, or on Earth for that matter, is as old as mankind, but it has accelerated since World War II. A lot of sightings occur near Air Force bases, the assumption being that aliens are attracted to our technology and swing by for a closer look. First of all, it looked as though it, uh, it was an aircraft. The light was coming in, it appeared to be quite slow, and then it speeded up and it came towards the lodge. And the closer it got, the more I realized it was not an aircraft. Sometimes there are pieces of something left behind. Usually there are stories and accounts. We saw people, or whatever you want to call them, uh, coming out. They didn't come out. There were no doors or anything on the ship. These things moved out. There were three of them. And they were covered with, they had light around them. And it, you know, they came out, they stood there, and they actually floated to make it more complicated. Uh, beings. And beings, exactly. And always, there are skeptics and debunkers. But if you didn't know it was a lighthouse, if you thought it was something small, maybe two, three meters across, pulsing about and pulsing white in the forest, yes, it looks as if it's within the trees, and it does appear to light up the trees as well. Another consistent factor, things never get resolved with any finality. When they've been telling the public for 30 years there's no such thing as UFOs, how can they reverse themselves now and say there is and they've been lying and covering it up? At least not for us, the public, who depend on our governments to share the results of their investigations. Welcome back. Our first guest, Stanton Friedman, a physicist who once worked, worked on big government projects, thinks every administration since 1947 has covered up evidence of UFOs and lied about other data relating to UFOs and aliens. Philip Klass disagrees. He's a former editor of Aviation Week and Space Technology. He would have put a UFO on the magazine's cover if he'd ever found one. Thank you for coming. Appreciate your being here. Welcome to the show. Um, Stan, quick, quick yes or no, have they landed or at least flown over? Oh yeah, they've landed, they've crash landed, they've come down, taken people away, they've produced physical traces all over the planet. They don't seem to discriminate. What's the most compelling evidence? Uh, I suppose it's the similarity of the reports from all over the world and of the physical traces and even the abductee reports and the apparent indication that governments are not telling us what goes on from all over the world. Although. Interestingly, the Russians have opened up in the last two years. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of weeks ago, in mid-August, uh, there was a big article, a full-page article almost, in one of the Russian publications talking about how Stalin had pushed his top rocket scientists to investigate in great secrecy. And they concluded it wasn't a threat to the security of the Soviet Union, but they were real. Mm -hmm. This just came out. Now, why they're talking now, I don't know. Maybe they need help. Maybe they're trying to encourage us it's to it. speak up. KGB misinformation plot, perhaps. Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. July 1947. Yes. And time. It's less than two weeks after the real big noise began in the United States. Uh, headline articles about flying saucers, flying discs. UFO wasn't a term that was used back then. With colleagues, we have now talked to well over a couple of hundred people connected with what happened there. Apparently, a saucer crashed. Uh, bodies were found, actually, two saucers and two sets of bodies. 75 miles northwest of Roswell out in the boonies and almost 200 miles west of there also out in the boonies. Uh, New Mexico uh, was a hotbed of classified military activity, of course, rocket firings, atom bomb tests, uh, a whole bunch of stuff going on, secret cities like Los Alamos. But whatever the reason, we've been doing a lot of investigating for more than a decade. It's unquestionable that saucers were recovered there which means that responsible people in the government have known since then. And obviously they couldn't go public with saying, oh yeah, we thought you'd like to know the Cold War has just begun, but there are aliens flying over the country, we can't do anything about mm -hmm. them. We know what they want, where they come from. They couldn't have said that, okay. not in the world circumstances. Phil, how unquestionable is this evidence? In 40 odd years of collecting UFO tales and reports, there is not, to my knowledge, a single physical artifact that Stan or anyone else can come up with 
even video pictures, that they can hand to the National Academy of Sciences and say, we rest our case on this evidence. Mm -hmm. Evidence is more than physical evidence, though, right? I, yeah. I repeat um, my we'll statement. We'll get into that <laughs> yes. in a moment. What's the most compelling UFO story that you've heard? You're skeptic, of course. Yes, you don't indeed. believe that there yes, is evidence, yes. but you'd like to. I mean, I'm oh, sure indeed. you'd love I, to I, have a UFO Everyone land would love. I'd love to have one land in my backyard. I'd love to be the first journalist to report, I touched one, I saw it, here is a photograph. But in 25 years of investigating UFO cases, all I come up with are old wives' tales, similar to the ghost stories. Uh, 200 years ago, women in Europe uh, claimed they were He knows that isn't but true. Two, two saucers land in New Mexico. They got bodies. in New Mexico. Where are those bodies? Right. We don't know. Some of them went to Wright Field, where they went. What, what we're dealing with here, you have to understand that we're not dealing with an open world in which, you know, I go to the government and say, hey, fellas, give me all the data on Roswell. We're dealing with a cosmic Watergate. That's not just a clever phrase. We're dealing with all it kinds is a of indicators. phrase, too, though. We'll oh, give you credit well, for that. Oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, when we go after data, th people think freedom of information is a magic key, opens up all the doors. It took me five years to get this released UFO document from the CIA. You can read eight words on the document. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it took five years to get that. After date and appeal. location, I think, are the, uh, the two yeah. words. That we, Even the security this market. Is, this is what you get when you go, go after the government yeah. for, uh, for a secret now, document. This is from the NSA. They're Looks the big boys like on the blog. Yeah. Now, <laughs> the, the important point here is that we're dealing with a black, an annual black budget, not under congressional control, of the Pentagon of over $34 billion a year, according to a Pulitzer Prize-winning you know, reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer. Not the National Inquirer, Philadelphia Inquirer. Important distinction. So, yeah, yeah the NSA spends $10 billion plus a year. Half the people in my American lecture audiences have never heard of the National Security Agency. If you can hide $34 billion a year, you can certainly hide a few bodies a few pieces of saucers. You can hide a lot more. Okay, let that. me stop you there because we can't hide a commercial. When we come back, Buzz Aldrin, an astronaut who went to the moon, and also the Frenchman who inspired Close Encounters of the Third Kind. When we come back. <laughs> astronaut Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon, so he's seen a thing or two in his time. And Jacques Vallée is an astrophysicist and author. He's the source of the character played by Francois Truffaut in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, now, Buzz, you have never, never actually claimed to have seen a, a UFO per se, but you did see something rather odd, I think, on the Apollo 11 mission, was it? Yes. Yeah. What yeah. did you see? It looked like a light that was moving against the background of the stars. And uh, having obtained my doctor of science degree in orbital mechanics, I know that that's not a star because it's moving relative to it uh, and it's got motion. Uh, we had just shortly before separated from the third stage of the Saturn rocket to turn around and dock with the landing craft. And we're now connected with the landing craft in several hours further on toward the moon the first uh, day after having left Earth. And in order to uh, dock with the lunar module, four very large panels come off. And uh, they're not tracked at all, but they go off in different directions. The upper stage of the rocket is tracked by the uh, manned spaceflight network. So they know exactly where that is. Well, <clears throat> I looked at this and uh, called uh, it to the attention of Neil and Mike and uh, fellow astronauts. Right, on, Mike. along on the flight. Yeah. And we took a look at Spec it and clear. <laughs> couldn't figure out what it was, but uh, thought, well, gee, maybe it, that could be the S-4B. That's our third stage rocket. So we were aware enough of the public concern about unusual sightings, and you don't have to go to MIT to know that, uh, it was not a smart thing to say to the ground, hey, Houston, <laughs> Apollo 11 here, we got some light coming along with us. You know? We got a UFO up here. Right. Yeah, okay. We knew that that wasn't a good thing They'd to scratch say. Scratch the mission right there, the, wouldn't they? We asked them where the S-4B was, and they said, 
Well, wait just a minute. We'll check with the back room. Well, in a couple of minutes, they came up and said it was some 6,000 miles away, and we figured that was probably not what we were looking at. Any idea what it was? Any speculation? Yeah, it was one of the four panels. Uh -huh. If it was not the S4B. Had to be one but of those four But reflecting in sunlight. Re in reflecting in sunlight, yeah. We could look at, look at it with the sextant and focus it brightly and see uh, uh, an L shape. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when you change the focus, it became a series of spirals indicating to me that it was out of focus. Just, just quickly, yes or no, do you believe in extraterrestrial life conceptually? The, well, in the probability or at least possibility? There are 24 <laughs> of us that left the Earth and came back. Well, you know what there I mean, are 12 you know. of us that walked on the moon. Uh, but how about things with, you know, like green and... Somebody originated you know. someplace else. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> just... Uh, why not? Well, okay, why not? That's a good enough answer. All right. But... We don't know. No, I, I didn't mean to, to put you in a spot there. I just Conceptually, you, you agree that it could be. How about you? Do you think that there's a... We got a shot at this? Well, I think most astronomers uh, would agree today that there is a high probability that life exists throughout the universe. Uh, I grew up uh, in France wanting to be an astronomer, mm -hmm. and I thought there couldn't be UFOs, because if there were UFOs, astronomers would see them, and astronomers would tell us. Mm -hmm. And then my first job was at Paris Observatory, tracking satellites. And, objects like, like, like these, and uh, we started tracking things that should not have been there, that we could not identify with the instruments that we had and the computers that we had, and the men in charge of the project confiscated the tape and erased it. And that's really what got me started, because that is not the way science works. You know, in science, you don't destroy data. Now, do I have this correct that you, you think that UFO sightings are a social phenomenon? That's Among you other things, it? I think there is a strong social component because a lot of people want I to believe that. it would be nice yeah. if there were aliens out there who came here to solve our problems. That would be nice. That's not necessarily what UFOs are. I'm convinced that there is a real physical UFO phenomenon. And I think that I could not prove it to the National Academy of Sciences, Phil, <laughs> but I, I believe that it's a manifestation of a form of consciousness that's not human consciousness. That does not mean necessarily that we're being visited by anything green from another planet. There could be other possibilities. Mm -hmm. Great. It's an, opportunity, it's an opportunity to do some good science. That's what science is all about. Okay, and that's what this issue is really about, is, is, is about science and, and scientific yes. proof. That's next, wait a minute. <laughs> <Not entirely. laughs> next, next, we'll meet a true believer in UFOs when we come back. It's in the sky. We saw flying objects containing maybe other people or another life form. No, I think I saw a UFO. We saw people, or whatever you want to call them. Joining us now is Bill Maxwell, the publisher of the Journal of UFO Facts. Bill has never seen a UFO, nor been contacted by aliens or extraterrestrials, but he passionately believes they exist. Why is that? Uh, well, there's too many thousands of people who claim to have seen UFOs, uh, physical traces, like Stanton mentioned, uh, movie film, and there are metal samples, uh, and it's been going on since recorded history. Yeah. So these things all lead me to believe that we are being contacted on a day-to-day -day basis by extraterrestrial civilizations not from this planet. Uh -huh. With all due respect, lots of people have seen the Loch Ness Monster, lots of people have seen Bigfoot, lots of people have seen Christ in a spaghetti billboard advertisement. Of that doesn't mean that, in fact, they exist. No, it doesn't mean that they exist, but when you do have a, a physical craft that you can take a picture of, and you can also see physical, it. Uh, wait a minute, is that a picture of a physical craft that we've taken? A, yeah, you can, sure. Yeah, okay. Well, I, that could be a pie tin, though. Sure, I, it, could, it could be, but uh, some of the photographs that we do have analyzed uh, are, have been analyzed by JPL, and, these, uh, and they, they substantiate that there is a craft that size mm -hmm that far away from a camera and that high in the sky. So it'd be hard, it'd be hard pressed to put a, a 25 foot, you know, diameter hubcap. craft, yeah, hubcap in the sky and take a picture of it. <clears throat> I know some like, MIT students who could, who could probably manage that though. Uh, who government... at JPL certified these photos? Who at, who at JPL certified those? Is that the question? Yes, no. and which photos? Many, there's, well, uh, thousands. Could you give us a name? Sure. 
Should I get, get the book out? Done this I can get it out of the book if you like. You know. are, are you well, talking not right now. Yeah, people talk about government cover-ups all the time, yeah. and it's pretty easy to, to, you know, the CIA is behind everything, and we know that now. Phil, government, how credible is the idea of a government Well, as a matter of fact, here is hard physical evidence that Stanton Friedman is aware of because it was published in the MUFON UFO Journal. What this is, is a top secret assessment written by the top Air Force Navy intelligence officials, December 10th, 1948. A year and a half Read after the these, title, Phil. A year and a half after these alleged crash saucers. What is the title and, of it? All right, the title of it is Analysis of Flying Object Incidents in the U.S. Uh -huh. And their conclusions are? And their conclusions are that probably, uh, if these are hard vehicles, actual vehicles, that these are probably spy vehicles developed by German scientists captured by the Soviets. So now, This is published in 1948, by the this, way, after the Roswell, New Mexico. Yeah, it's right. a very so, limited focused document that doesn't <laughs> recognize that we're dealing with compartmentalized information and that their whole focus, that is, the way security works is you don't tell everybody and then hope everybody shuts up. Mm -hmm. You tell very few people you need special access, if you will, a need to know for that particular information. Because you have a top secret clearance does not give you access to all top secret information. Mm -hmm. The focus of this report is on the Russian side. That doesn't mean that no, there were it's other a, reports. It's, it's an analysis of what are UFOs. They say we're getting all these reports. We don't know what they are. And so we that's, think that, that, that's an analysis from 1947. Right after 48. Right. Right. So what's, what's happening it's between 1947 well, and now? But the point is that if and there were crashed UFOs and at Roswell, somebody forgot to tell the top Air Force and Navy right. but, but intelligence. But now, if there was, wait, if there was a government conspiracy, the same if there was a government conspiracy, wouldn't they publish something like this to cover, cover up the facts? To, keep, to withhold the facts from the President of the United States, to withhold the facts <laughs> from the, to withhold the facts from the Defense Department, the people who might have to defend the country if there but couldn't this be misinformation? That couldn't document be doesn't misinformation? mean that they withheld For the information from those people. Mm -hmm. It's a specific study. The CIA has admitted that on occasion there were three different groups working independently, looking at the same problem, with no access across between the groups. Mm -hmm. So this is one study. It certainly doesn't mean that there wasn't a Roswell, and it mm -hmm. isn't a top secret plus, which is what you need. Th yes, this is an example of the dilemma of denying a cover-up, okay? The government is trying to come forth with evidence denying a cover-up, and what do the other people say? Oh, well, that's all wrong. So whatever you come up with to deny that you're covering up something, somebody's already always got another answer. Well, uh, let me, let me, can, can, can you imagine how many people would have been aware of some of these things and could have made fortunes by denying this hard evidence that is supposed to be there. Let not if they, didn't, they couldn't make Stand. the fortune if they didn't have a piece themselves. Let me put it to you this Why way. Would it is not know? up to Phil to prove that UFOs don't exist. It's up to you and not. everybody yeah. else to prove that, in fact, they yeah, do of exist. Beyond a reasonable negative. doubt. And we can't do anything right now because we have to go to a commercial. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. the film he said this is a and we actually have the picture of the ufo here and uh he, he got off the jeep went to the aircraft handed the film to the pilot the canopy closed and the aircraft took off uh, the reason for them not talking is usually that they've been threatened threatened or they fall under uh the regulations jane up 146 uh, which talks about if anybody uh talks about ufo events that have been reported in the military they're subject to fine, loss of pension and retirement and every other thing, and even jail time. We're back exploring the outer limits with our guests, Philip Klass, Jacques Vallée, Bill Maxwell, Buzz Aldrin, and Stanton Friedman. Jacques, what do you think? Government cover-up? CIA plot? I think the big secret in Washington may be that the government has no idea what those things are. <laughs> there is a lot of data. The government has a lot of data. That does not mean that they have information. I think it's a crime that that data is not released to the scientific community. I think that would, you would have a much 
higher level of debate. Why, why wouldn't they release it? Actually, the, uh, 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 Colonel Bob Dean, who is a 27-year uh, veteran of the Army, worked on uh, shape NATO uh, command post. They, he came across a, a study that was done in 1961 called the assessment. And it was released to 18 different NATO members at the time. And the assessment concluded that there were, at that time, four extraterrestrial civilizations visiting our Earth. Four. At that time, in 1964, when he retired in 1976, his friends and the NSA and the CIA concluded that there were over 100 extraterrestrial civilizations visiting our Earth on a continuing basis. The and NSA are you believes one? that there are 100... Are you an uh, <laughs> Phil, Phil's I, asking I, if, I, if you were in No, I'm a UFO, unforgettable object. <laughs> we, until we get the documents from the government, the fan club back there. We, until we can get the actual documents from the government, I mean, when the NSA admits it's withholding 156 UFO documents, that's from one limited search, and Why won't even they show that? them to a what's federal the, court the judge. Of doing that? There's been well, I don't speak for the government. Let me give know, you four reasons for the governments, not to all governments, it's not just the U.S., yeah. not to want to release data. First, they want to figure out how the darn things work and make wonderful weapons delivery and defense systems. Haven't you been set able up, to figure out in 43 years. Set up, it might take 300 years if you give, gave Columbus a... Uh, a nuclear submarine, he couldn't build 20 of them, even if he had an unlimited budget. You want to figure out how they work, you set up your secret project. Rule number one is you can't tell your friends without telling your enemies. They watch television, too. The second problem is the other side of the same coin. What if somebody else figures out how they work before you do? How do you defend against them? They make wonderful systems for attacking. You don't want them to know. You know they know. And the third problem is the biggie. Suppose there were to be an announcement by highly trusted individuals around the world saying that indeed some UFOs are alien spacecraft what would happen? You can imagine the stock market would go down, mental hospital admissions, church attendance would go up, I suppose. But the Act big, the big thing, that, the big Actually, thing that yeah. would happen would be an immediate push on the part of the younger generation, which was not alive when there wasn't a space program, unlike some of us older people, uh -huh. uh, for a whole new view of ourselves, instead of as Americans, Russians, Chinese, Peruvians, whatever, as Earthlings, because obviously from an alien viewpoint, we are all Earthlings. There's no government on this planet that I'm aware of that wants its citizens to owe their allegiance to the planet instead of that individual government. Nationalism is the only game in town. Actually, the, the, the question that you did pose, that why wouldn't the government release this information? Mm -hmm. There's many, many reasons. Economics is, is one, the power structure, the control structure of our planet. Okay, whether or not the government releases anything, though, right. what I want to know is if there's a hundred civilizations out there, if there are four civilizations out there visiting, if there's one, why don't they just show up, okay. shake hands on the White House lawn, I can tell you exactly why they won't. The, because the, the, every, every time they do try to come by or, or, or fly by, what does our government do and the rest of the governments of the world? We send up fighter planes, we try to shoot them down. Not true. Not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Really? Airline pilots have seen these things. Ron, do you that's talk that's to the time. squirrels when you walk through the woods? Well, sometimes, but that's okay. my business. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, know, <laughs> they know that we know they're here. After you've been tracked on radar enough times, and I've talked to a hundred military guys with great stories to tell, then you know the guy down there knows that you're here. So, Obviously, their purpose is not to land on the White House lawn. And actually, well, why the, president, the, the President of the United States doesn't speak for five billion Earthlings. Well, or the Kremlin, actually, you know, but, courtyard or but whatever. But you're I mean, suggesting that they're here to say, hi, fellas, what can we do for well, you? Well, they Let's are, have in a fact. They know we know they're here, That's so why right. don't they resolve this but mystery? Maybe they're graduate students doing their thesis work on the development of a primitive society. Ah, well, ah, are we... In fact, Phil, some experiment or, or Jean, see, somebody's uh, already, thesis experiment? We're already jumping to the conclusion that if there are UFOs, they have to be from outer space. Why? I mean, where is the connection? I'm not jumping to that conclusion at all. If are you, you look at manufacturing... another country's saying, military development? No, there may uh, be run other forms of consciousness that we have not been aware Explain of. Explain what you're talking when about I, here. For I spend a lot of time talking to witnesses, and I try to listen carefully to what they say. Mm -hmm. What they describe are not spacecraft. They describe extraordinary Some forms witnesses. of well, let them extraordinary finish. forms of energy that seem to appear out of nowhere, disappear into nowhere, can change shapes dynamically, and yet are physical. Mm -hmm. To me, that's very exciting. It's what an does opportunity that suggest to, to test some of the more advanced theories in physics today. I think this is something that should be addressed by physics. It's clearly beyond the capability of today's technology. Right. What does that suggest to you? That, that things appear, they disappear, the con well, parallel universes? I is think, that I think that's, that's what science is all about. I don't understand and why I can... Phil is so upset about having one more mystery. I mean, we don't understand the sun. 
we don't understand the immune system. There well, are all kinds some of things. Phil, you're not upset at the mystery. You're upset uh, no. at people saying we've solved the mystery, well, and this well, is what it is. No. Well, so saying that some UFOs... Let, wait a minute, let Phil have a chance. Yeah, okay. Poor Phil is down there in the end all yes. alone. And it's, <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, it, we fortunately live in a free country. Every one of us can believe what we wish or what we don't wish. I'm only here to try to present the other, the skeptical viewpoint, a viewpoint which I think is predominant in our National Academy of Science. I'm not a spokesman for them. But organized science, well, who, 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 the physical... Uh, may I speak without interruption for just a moment? Uh, now I would smack you, Bill. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, the, the National Academy of Sciences, the Physical Society of Physicists, the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers, of which I am a fellow, uh, none of these groups taken any official scientific interest in UFO reports I just maybe because these kinds of promoters spout such scientific pseudo-science. Okay, well, well, hey, hey, I'm the physicist here who's just been attacked okay. by Bill's you. In, Bill's in so anxious, though, I want to let him I, I would shot. say I'm not a promoter. Uh, the conclusions that our magazine comes to is that there are many extra you know, terrestrials who are visiting our planet. They may travel interdimensionally. They may travel uh, through time. They may travel physically. And we, ha and we, have, and we have many, many... 3,000 photographs. If, if there's a single photograph that is true, that, doesn't that mean that a lot of extraterrestrial races may come here? Some 10 billion... You can't jump to that conclusion. Ten, I won't. Some 10 billion stars... You're in, not ready to, to... 10 billion stars Mark. in our galaxy. So that, that's a lot of stars. Billion, so one of the series of, stars, of photographs that, that Bill mentions come from one man, Billy Meyer, in Switzerland. I've gone to the place in Switzerland where he lives. That man is not a poor farmer who happens to be seeing flying saucers. He has an entire cult around him. The negatives have never been available to scientists, and I think that is not the way we can solve the problem. They, okay, and I would agree with there's that. There's another problem we can't solve. We'll be right back after these words from our sponsor. A red or reddish-orange color, but it had other colors moving around in it. We saw flying objects containing maybe other people or another life form. We're back. The subject is UFOs. Um, Buzz, now you, you would like to see NASA get more money and space exploration really take off. Is it one way to do that, to encourage people's belief in extraterrestrials? Give us something, a carrot out there dangled in space <laughs> for us to go after? Well, I think there's a legitimate reason for... Uh, search for extraterrestrial intelligence the way that NASA's defined it and to search the skies for evidence of intelligent signals coming through electromagnetic radiation or anything else that's detectable to our senses. That's good science. And that's what we're trying to do and that's what you could do very well on the far side of the moon where it's nice and quiet and we don't hear the noise that's created that emanates out from here. Okay. Yes, I I think Mr. Fillet has the right idea in that we should all be open-minded. I mean, that's what science is all about, hypothesizing and then finding the experiment and making the conclusions. But I do think the supporters of the aliens are being a bit way off base here. I would like to know if you have any real evidence that you can share well, with us. Yes, I do. I have, I have evidence that I can share with you in our journal. Every, we publish it four times a year. It does have physical evidence, has photographs. There are sound recordings that have, have come to light. We just had a case come to light with a... Is there a, any case that is, is international almost, well-known, really... Loads of cases from all over the world. The problem is most people aren't aware of the data. Look, when you, there are five large-scale scientific studies. The biggest one done for the United States Air Force covered 3,201 sightings. So over 600 of these couldn't be explained, separate from the ones for which there was insufficient <laughs> information. Quality evaluation says the better the quality, the more likely to be an unknown. That's one major study. It isn't mentioned in 10 skeptical books about UFOs. Don't bother us with the facts. Our minds are made up. That's the attitude of the debunker. And what the public doesn't know, we're not going to tell them. That's the second rule for the debunker. There have been eight PhD theses done about UFOs, some of them having lots of good information. <coughs> the problem is you won't get it on the 6 o'clock news. The problem is that many scientific journals won't publish UFO information. That doesn't mean most scientists don't believe in UFOs. There have been polls done that show not only that most 
general public people believe in UFOs, but the greater the education, the more likely to believe in UFOs. Uh, pardon they, me. They, they want to they, believe in them. The no, it isn't that they want to believe in them. Most people are scared of the unknown. They just assume that these things weren't real. Nah, because we want to believe. We that's believe, a small minority. Just no, like I want to believe. Uh, well, I'm scared to go. Five percent of the people be don't believe too. we've been to the moon. You realize that? Fine. I don't need to argue there are, with them. There are crazy views out there. A small percentage may want to believe. Just as, and I agree with you. I don't try to argue with them either or with the ones who say the moon landing was all staged by television out in the desert. Well, let's take a little poll here. How many people here in the audience would really want to believe if, there was, if they thought there was evidence to suggest it? How many people? Raise your hand, clap, do whatever. A lot of people want to... If yeah, there's even evidence. Even Phil wants to believe. If there's evidence. No, he doesn't. I, I, I sure he does. If, if he, if he <laughs> Read his books. He does not want to believe. Like if he truly investigated like he proposes to, he would find more evidence than he could ever imagine. All right. We got a question here. Yeah, I have an input and a uh, question for Stan. Uh, I met a four-star general, chief of staff of the Air Force, Curtis May, in 1987, and what he told me is that the, Air uh, that the CIA was withholding information from him about where the flying saucers were coming from. He told me that personally. Had you oh, had a few drinks with him before? No. <laughs> Just checking. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Had to, had to ask. Uh, I have a question for Stan regarding President Reagan making five statements about the alien presence. Uh-oh. Yeah, on five different occasions, uh, President Reagan did say that if there were alien visitors, we and the Russians would work together. He also has publicly stated that he's had a sighting of a UFO, Ron. I don't know whether he talked to you yeah, about no, that. No, he didn't, and I, I've heard that too, but I don't buy that. Was that the National Enquirer or something? Uh, it's been in other papers. Yeah, well, it might have been up, was it originally in the Enquirer? You might, you might, I've heard about it elsewhere. You might was it originally in the this, Enquirer? Uh, one yeah. of these articles <laughs> was. I think it was. Now, yeah. Ron, yeah. wait okay. a minute, <laughs> It's a, it's a major government cover-up, because he never told me. Have if, you asked him? Yeah, absolutely. He would have. I he, swear to you, he would have said something if he really This is when he UFO. was governor, not when I'd he was like president. I'd have first on his list to call. <laughs> I, 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 Which I list, <laughs> Okay, um, if there's so much evidence and, you know, identification of these things, why is it, I have two questions for you. Why is it still unidentified flying object? And second question, why is there a super paranoid attitude about the government trying to cover up all this? Why should they? Now, wait, exactly. if you're asking Spear wild Ooh. conspiracy theory, Jacques. We, we keep using loose terms like belief and evidence. Science is not about belief. Right. And evidence is not something we have. We have a lot of very interesting anecdotal information. The science has never been done. There are a few individual scientists who have spent their, their spare time and their own money trying to, like myself, trying to investigate those cases all over the world. I think we have a good case that something should be pursued, but we have not done the science. And until the science is done, we're not going to have the answer. Most okay, of hang on a sec, because we got to go to a commercial. We'll be right back, though. Someone, something here, knows the answer. I may have the answer. Let's have a look. We're back talking about UFOs. Buzz, give us a little inside dope, a little locker room chatter, uh, the astronauts. You guys ever kick around the idea of UFOs, extraterrestrials? Well, I... Uh... I just came from uh, three, two and a half days with Neil Armstrong. We were talking about what we did on the lunar surface, and uh, people were helping us document uh, the exact facts. And, uh, you know, uh, any of us could be rather wealthy if we just disclosed all of a sudden that we saw UFOs. But we don't do that, because we're, we're credible people. If you want funds to support something, you go to the Congress, and the Congress is going to respond to the people, and I'm trying to get back to the moon and on to Mars, and that's what I think we need the finances to do, mm -hmm. rather than to support a lot of these bizarre studies. Yes, Sean. Um. <laughs> a smattering of applause. <laughs> Gordon Cooper, who is someone I think we both respect, told me that he had seen something that he could not identify, not from orbit, but from the ground when he was a test pilot. Well, I just told you that I saw something that I couldn't identify. 
But you just identified it. No, I didn't. But there's, it's, uh, it's still identified. It doesn't matter in a specific case. There's thousands and thousands of reports. Sure. If one single report is true, then the UFO mystery is not a mystery anymore that we are being visited by extraterrestrials. Oh. But so well, far, it hasn't been satisfaction. But not one has been established. Science wants repeatable experiments. Well, there, there, repeatable there is, a, there is a, a repeatable, how could you repeat? Oh, I want you to land here again so this, the government can shoot uh, SAM missiles at you. And, and Science and is also right. ready to respond to stimuli. When I was at the University of Chicago, they had a balloon ready to launch with a box of emulsion to record particles from the sun when a detector said there'd been a solar storm. They couldn't reproduce it, they couldn't duplicate it, they were ready to observe it when it showed up. We have lots of sightings from all over the world. People like you and I, and I have had some grants fortunately, are able to go out and check on those cases. The money is piddling compared to what is used in big research and development programs. I've worked on a number of them, but there is evidence not in terms of a prominent person saying, I saw it, but I don't have the report. What good would that do? Well, the answer may come, Ron, in the tens of millions of low-cost video cams that tens of millions of Americans now have. Because still photos of UFOs are terribly easy to hoax, as his magazine demonstrates. I, I but, disagree. But, <laughs> But video is much more difficult, not impossible, much more difficult to hoax. There so are with good tens videos of millions now. of video cams <laughs> in another year or so, you may have loads of film showing ET okay. craft. Let me get a question. He's never seen my magazine before I know, before I know today. you disagree never. with him, Bill. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have a question, but I have a comment. Is that allowed? Uh, yeah. A brief one. Yeah. All right. Um, for personal reasons and for the spontaneous reasons of the emotions I'm feeling right now, watching all of you and listening, I had to stand up and comment. I'm watching five men older than me, one younger than me, <laughs> probably, <Not> me. <laughs> sitting here bandying about an issue of tremendous magnitude with a recipe of old ideas. All of you got here in limousines, 250 year, or cars, or bus. 300 years ago, it would have been on horseback. If somewhere along the lines, somebody had not opened their minds to a new idea, new th evolution and the changes in so much of what we all enjoy today wouldn't be existing. There's a flaw. I find humankind more phenomenal than the phenomenon of extraterrestrials. Um, the SETI program has been looking along the radio bands for, uh, for evidence of technological civilizations out there for some time now, and they came up with a big goose egg, Zippo. It's nothing. a seriously flawed program, Ron, that doesn't really involve science so much as what I would call cultism. Charismatic leadership, a narrow view, we assume there's life out there. We assume they're trying to communicate with radio. We assume that our systems can pick them up. If they're using lasers, we won't be able to pick them up at all. But those guys are totally unwilling to look at the UFO evidence. Well, I, well plus they're focusing in one particular direction. But, well, but if you're interested question, in... Why does an advanced technology doesn't give some, give some evidence of, of radio technology and radio waves going out into space? Because they're much, they're much more advanced than the radio. If they, they have... Well, we're, we're, we're a little ant race on a small planet on the edge of the Milky Way. Looking for smoke signals 100 years ago would have been one way to check on long-distance communication. Yeah. But it certainly isn't the most advanced If they're advanced that advanced, though, there's something kind of pedestrian about the whole idea of flying saucers and little green men. That's Wouldn't why they be more advanced that's than true, that? That's true, because some of them do travel interdimensionally. Is that, Jacques, is that the, are we getting into your country now, up. interdimensional uh, travel? Well, I think that was 20 years ago. You know, that was a very marginal idea in science. Today, it's not such a marginal idea in science. Mm -hmm. If you look at the Sky and Telescope magazine a year and a half ago, published an article about the creation of universes with multiple dimensions moving at right angle universe. to each other. That's mm -hmm. a very interesting idea. It's a theory, and perhaps the UFO phenomenon is giving us the opportunity to test some of those advanced theories in physics. I think that's why we should look at it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, I've got a comment about what I've been hearing about these cover-ups and the SETI program. If we have a government that has military regulations that prevents pilots from revealing that they've seen a UFO before they've been debriefed, or at all, if we have astronauts who are told to shut up about what they see, 
some of them. Ooh. And if we have um, a, a National Academy of Sciences who is uh, funded by the government and works as part of the government, why would we assume that any of these are going to tell us what they find uh, instead of just wrapping it up and hiding it? Why should we assume that they're going to tell us? They won't. Uh, well, we assume that they don't. As a matter won't. of fact, one, we have very advanced technology for building stealth aircraft. We can try and have kept that secret from potential enemies. But anything that is as universal as ETs visiting Earth, it would be ridiculous to try to keep it secret. If there were a secret crash saucer recovered from New Mexico, why keep it secret and have one land or crash in Moscow or Paris Maybe or one London? Maybe one has, Phil. And they, let them beat us to the punch by saying, hey, the first ET craft chose Mother Russia to land they can't, uh, rather than... They the, want to use the technology first. That's what matters here is technology. Well, you know that. You've covered the technology beat for 40 years. Let's take so another question. Like they, Phil Class, yes, your time has come to an end. Why don't you retire and go fishing? We're in a new area. The UFOs are here. They're going to stay here. They're not going away. Go fishing. That's right. Do UFOs go fishing? Do they, uh, do they like well, to go fishing? Well, fishing for UFOs. Quite a bit. <laughs> they hang on uh, the water I, quite I'm a not a fisherman. I try to go sailing and downhill skiing with the, my wife as much as my <laughs> aviation well, week. We One thing he doesn't schedule. do, Ron, we talked about the crash saucer. My colleagues and I have talked to well over 200 witnesses involved in that case and been down in New Mexico many times. Phil has talked to none of those witnesses. Wrong. Uh, you Phil, have? Phil you you had not as of two weeks ago. All right. Uh, three no, weeks ago, I whatever had the time communicated of... with one long ago, but there were three people who allegedly were first-hand witnesses. Mac Brazel, the rancher who found the debris, Major Jesse Marcel, who went out to his ranch, and a man named Sheridan Cavett. There are two of those three, Marcel and Brazel, are dead. Cavett is still living. Have you talked to Cavett? Yes. What did he say? Did he? Come and I've talked to Mar been in Marcel's house, and no, I've no, talked to Cavett is living today. Yes, and he was a counterintelligence guy. This is getting rather obscure here. Yeah, uh, right. he, I mean, and he denied. denied he has done no investigation know. of the case. That's what it boils no, right. down well, he he to. Hang on a second. The Christ saucer. We're case. running out of time here. We obviously we've resolved this whole question of yeah, UFOs right. <laughs> naturally, and we'll be back right after this. Not sure yet about uh, UFOs. Will join us tomorrow for part two on the subject. Meet some people who claim to have extended contact with the uh, individuals from outer space. Before we go, let me thank my guests, Philip Klass, Jacques Vallée, Bill Maxwell, Buzz Aldrin, Stanton Friedman. Until then, live long and prosper.